I've been a real happy camper here on the Mountain Morning Show lately because we've had a lot of good fine liquor come through the station in the last few weeks. And today I'm lucky enough to have Alan Scott here. He's the co-founder of Water Pocket Distillery. Uh, Alan, how are you doing, man? Good to see you. I'm doing thanks great. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank Unfortunately, you for having me. Your, your wife and co-founder Anna is not able to make it. Right. Shout out to Anna if you're if you're watching at home. Yeah. Thank you so much for making this happen here. Let's talk about Water Pocket. Uh, you guys have been open since 2017. Yes. What uh, drove you and Anna to start uh, a distillery? I know that for yeah. people who've started craft breweries in the past and stuff like that people look at them and they're like what, what are you thinking when you start this obviously it's turning out to be a great venture yeah. but what, what drove you to, to start well it's a complex question but uh, uh, first of all we wanted to work for ourselves okay in the long run I thought that was uh, something we really wanted to do kind of as a lifelong thing you life kinda, goal yeah <laughs> you learn you're an entrepreneur at some point in your life yes and, absolutely and so uh, it was a good match for our skill set okay uh, I've been home brewing and home winemaking and pickling and fermenting and things. So uh, you're at familiar home. with the side <clears throat> that side of distilling. I'm then. familiar with the creative side of distilling. Okay. And uh, Anna uh, is a chemical engineer, PhD in biochemistry. Wow. She had the technical background to really bring that uh, structure okay. to the business. Um, she also has an MBA, so she's uh, sort of the brains of the outfit. The brain. She, <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I'm sort of the yeah um, creative side, the, the flavor side. But uh, I'd be, you know, messing around in my own personal lab if it weren't for her. Well, that's, She's really that's the fun that you can have that because mm -hmm. you can kind of come to her with a pretty interesting idea in terms of something that you want to make, and she can actually make it happen or tell you if it's something that's feasible yeah. or not feasible, really, which is really, really fun. So let's talk about Water Pocket. Yep. What was your guys' mission with starting this distillery? You guys are a little mm -hmm. bit unique from other distilleries, which I think is we awesome. Are. You guys found a really cool niche in the market. We, we wanted to bring... The, the true spirit of craft distilling to to Utah. Okay. Not, not that it's not already here, but there's so much of the spectrum of what you can do in craft distilling that there were some underserved areas. And uh, Anna and I lived in Europe for about three years, and we were really fond of the botanical spirits, the uh, liqueurs, the, some of the smaller regional stuff that we encountered there. And I think this is something, a side of distilling mm -hmm. that Americans aren't very familiar with. When you right. think of distilling here in the U.S., you think of your kind of harder liquors, yes. I mean, in terms of your, your more traditional liquors, vodka, gin, Precisely. whiskeys, uh, but you guys are exploring more of the botanical side of the liqueurs, which I think yeah. is very, very cool, and I think it's awesome that we have a Utah distillery kind of opening people's eyes to that there's this yeah. whole other side of the distilling world that yeah. you haven't even experienced yet. We took a lot of inspiration from craft brewing okay um, I imagine the craft brewers back in like 1980 had this challenge everybody in the US drank about eight beers you know there was Miller there was Bush there was Budweiser they, but they were all kind of the same beer um, when they opened and they started introducing things like pale ales uh, stouts uh, porters saisons or farmhouse ales those were all really new experiences well now they're just normal. They're not even a snobby thing, right? Yeah, it's just, not, a pale ale is not is not snobbish it's by not, means. Yeah. It's part of our culture now. Yeah, and craft brewing really did that for us. It wasn't Budweiser that brought us yeah. farmhouse ales. Totally. You know? So we wanted to do the same for some of these more niche uh, and unique and uh, and regional spirits, and we added the additional layer of we wanted to go into the distillation past and see some stuff that was made maybe 100, 200 years ago. That's no longer being made, but comes from an, a golden age of distillation. Wow. Um, and the, the Oread, the Long Lost, is our first product that really pays tribute to that kind of thing. And we'll do more of that. So we're, we're keenly interested in that aspect of it, too. That's very awesome. We'll jump into uh, highlighting all of these great uh, liqueurs that you guys distill, as well as some of the others, like the traditional whiskey that you guys have as well. But before we do that, I just want to learn more about Water Pocket. Where are you guys located? Um, and uh, how can people get involved if they're interested in coming in and checking it out? Yeah, we're, uh, we're located over in West Valley. OK. So we're pretty close to the intersection of Redwood and 201. Okay, excellent. Just, just north of Printer's Row. Um, our facility is there. It's a production facility. Our stills are there. We have a tasting room. We have a retail shop, and we have a package agency. Wow, so, so everything there. So if you, uh, there are certain products, say, we don't release through the DABC. All of them are available for sale at the distillery. So uh, we do tours. Uh, we do tastings. Uh, uh, and it's just a good place to stop by and talk to us about the products. If you're interested uh, if in you, If you're interested. 
So one of the great things about being a local craft distiller is I'm a real person in a real location. Yeah, you, can, yeah. you can find me. It's like uh, not yeah. like calling that 1-800 number on the back of a, a exactly. Budweiser can. <laughs> and getting a phone to you and then, yeah. In a lot of the national stuff, you actually don't know who the distiller is. Yeah. I'm very identifiable, so is Anna. And uh, you can come and talk to us about what we're doing. You can give us feedback on the product. You can tell us in the tasting what you like and you don't like. Well, it and sounds to me like you guys are very excited to hear that feedback. It sounds oh, yes. to me like you guys are a type of distillery that's open to uh, kind of pursuing the this odds and ends of this craft uh, this craft side of, yeah. the, of the market, which is really cool. So if, yeah. if there's someone who kind of knows about a cordial that, that isn't made too often and, and is like, you know, we'd love to try this. Can, is that something you'd be open to Ab to listening feedback that way? Absolutely. That's or great. Or if it's an existing product, we love the feedback, uh, particularly from like on-premise folks. They, they give us invaluable feedback. This is what the customer is saying. This is what we like about it. This is, these are some of the challenges we have with this product or it works in this cocktail or it doesn't work in this cocktail. Um, We've changed a couple of formulas okay. by a small amounts, just based on my experience in the tasting room, because just tasting with people in the room and having them sort of tell me, this is the experience that I'm having. Um, and it's not just, uh, you know, some of it's so new that it takes a while for people to- To set in really. To really set in, what to understand what they're doing, yeah. yeah. But then we can have the dialogue. This is what you're tasting. This is, these are the botanicals in the spirit. Uh, this is this style, you know, we make Snow Angel, which is a cumul, and a cumul is just not an ordinary an spirit or here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's, uh, most people that uh, ask me about it don't know what it is right out of the gate. And I think that's something that's interesting about, that kind of separates, obviously, the, the liqueurs from the liquors and the cordials from the liquors as well and from the spirit mm -hmm. side. Um, it, it seems like to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, the liqueur side and the cordial side of things seems to, seems to be more of a well-rounded uh, experience almost, rather than just a drink that you're having. Uh, you're getting flavors that are probably some that you've never f had interact before on sure. your palate. Yeah. A lot maybe that you've never even experienced on your palate before. Sure. So I like that you said you're really trying to set almost like an experience mm -hmm. when you're having this drink as well, which is fantastic, yeah. I think. That's and, really cool. And we try to focus on uh, we take our name Water Pocket from the Water Pocket Fold in Capitol Reef, and it's a really lovely wilderness sort of experience. Yeah. Our motto is open wild, and we want to take that into everything that we do because we want to take people to a new place. We want sort of the adventurous people to come to us and say, what, have you, what do you have now? What haven't That's I so tried in your lineup yet? Um, or we want them to be interested in what we're doing. We want the people who've never tried in tomorrow wow. to try tomorrow and some of my favorite experiences are people who taste it and they're like... It's like puzzled by it Yeah, almost. sometimes <laughs> they're puzzled. I, there was a guy with the Amaro who tasted it and he got the puzzled look on his face and then he came back about three weeks later and he said, I'm gonna buy a bottle of the Amaro and I don't know if I like it, <laughs> but, I'm but I can't stop thinking about it is what he said that's and it so was like, cool. and that's a, one of the precise experiences why we're doing this particular like That hits the nail on the head right there. That's exactly why yeah. we're trying to do what you're doing. And yeah. for being <laughs> open for only a year, you guys have a wide array of products right now. Let's take a very quick commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna learn all about the lineup that Water Pocket Distillery has and learn more about the company as well. Don't go anywhere, you won't wanna miss out on this. We'll be right back. Welcome back here to the Mountain Morning Show. I'm joined right now by Alan Scott. We're continuing our conversation about his distillery, Water Pocket Distillery. They're brand new here in Utah. Let's learn a little bit more right now. And we are going to start off with the familiar whiskey. Everyone, yes. obviously, especially in this town, is familiar with yes. the whiskey. But I love the name. I love the branding. Let's give a little uh, yeah. shout out to that right now. Let's, oh, let's, thank you. let's learn more. So the, the Robber's Roost, uh, it comes out of our distillery, um, but we didn't distill it. Okay. It's a sourced product, and anything that's sourced that comes out of our distillery goes under the Robert's Roost label. Label, and we, I love the yeah. name. That's so yeah. okay. Our motto for that is, you know, it's made over yonder, but it's robbed right here. It's robbed so, right here. <laughs> so, I love it. Uh, and this particular product that you have in your hand is just a, a lovely light whiskey. Okay. Uh, it's distilled at a higher proof. If you think of, you know, a needle going from moonshine to vodka, you've okay. just tilted the distillation a little towards just vodka. Tilt, okay, all so right. Lighter body, it's very drinkable. You lose a bit of complexity, okay, but it makes up for it in just 
drinkability. It's, it's a lovely. It's a very nice smooth whiskey. Smooth something that's going to be easy. Summer drinking kind of whiskey. Yeah. Excellent. And and the name mm. I got to say. So Robbers Roost, if you're not familiar, it's a legendary hideout for bandits uh, yeah. in the Old West. So what a great name fitting for this whiskey here. I see you can see the color is a little bit lighter in caramel color yeah. than some whiskeys that you'd see. But like you said, it's it's you guys focus mainly on the drinkability here. It's the drinkability. And we want to achieve three things with Robbers Roost. We want it to be unique, we want it to be good, and we want it to be a great value. Okay. So we, we focus on, you know, uh, picking out unique whiskeys and other things. Uh, we're also going to be able to do a few things with Robert's Roost we wouldn't otherwise do. We have a peach infused whiskey using wow. Willard Bay peaches that it's coming out under Robert's Roost. And we have a cordial that's based on an old uh, British uh, cordial from hundreds of years ago. Okay. That's a whiskey product infused with uh, dried fruit and other botanicals. Okay. So that, that will also come out under Robert's That Roost. sounds really great. Yeah. The peach whiskey mm -hmm. sounds good too. That almost sounds like it yeah. would be fantastic in like an iced tea style format. <laughs> That'd be or is it really peach? good. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's delicious. Wow. So that's Robert's Roost side of things yeah. uh, uh, from Water Pocket Distillery. Let's learn a little bit more about your guys' rum. We were talking about this before you came on the first mm -hmm. segment. And I'm really interested to learn more about this because this is a rum, but it's a unique rum I in a way. It really is a unique rum. It's, it's a white rum that's all we've released so far. We do have rum in barrels that's aging. Uh, this is a rum that's really focused on blackstrap molasses, turbinado sugar. Uh, we source those from uh, Louisiana and okay. make it from scratch in the distillery, start to finish. Um, it's got a lot of character, a lot of flavor. That blackstrap molasses gives it a lot of structure to okay. stand up in cocktails really well. So it really uh, adds a nice dimension to a mojito or a tiki drink or something like that. Okay. So, um, so a little yeah. different than, than some other rums that you've maybe had, uh, especially yeah. just your standard run-of-the-mill type of run, rums. Uh, yeah. This is going to kind of add an, an enhanced flavor to those drinks, yeah. really. I, I like to think of it as one of the few white rums you would be happy to drink straight. Happy to drink straight. Wow. Yeah. And that, I remember when we were first mm -hmm. talking before you'd uh, come on the first segment, that was kind of the whole concept, really, is you guys wanted to make um, liquors and, and spirits that people were not just going to enjoy to have in mixed drinks, but really to enjoy just straight up. Yeah. As distillers, we try to focus on everything coming out of the bottle tasting good. Tasting good. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we really, uh, if it's just going to be an ingredient in a cocktail, we're not so focused on that. Okay. Um, certainly nothing wrong with that. but. Uh, we really want there to be a complete experience straight out of the bottle. And then we're not so focused on the mixology. There's so many talented people here in Utah Absolutely. that really have taken our spirits to a whole new level. We've learned so much from the on-premise well, and, and I think with the, uh, the cocktail take, folks. The yeah. takeaway with that is that you guys are, take a lot of pride in what you do. You yeah. guys want your product, the end product, to be as, as uh, enjoyable as yeah. possible. So let's move on to the next. Yeah. This is your guys' coffee liqueur, and it has a little bit of rum in there as well, which is really unique and cool. So we use uh, a different formula of rum, a little more focused on the turbinado sugar. Uh, this is uh, the coffee and all of the ingredients in this are from raw ingredients inside the distillery. We even roast our own beans for this coffee. Wow. So, so it's our rum made from scratch and all of the other ingredients from scratch. Um, we, we macerate uh, and we distill part of the maceration and it all comes back blended uh, with a little bit of cinnamon, a uh, little bit of cocoa, um, uh, and house infused vanilla that we actually bring in vanilla beans. So Excellent. it's all from scratch. So let's choose one more that we can highlight, yep. something that you're very proud of. Let's maybe move on to something that's very unique and different yeah. that people have not uh, experienced before here in Utah. Yeah. And this is in, uh, pardon me, uh, how do you pronounce this? <laughs> so that, that's pronounced Oread. Oread, okay, I was gonna try, uh, but I didn't yeah. wanna butcher it, yep. So the Oread comes from Greek mythology. Okay. They were the female spirits that lived in the high country. Okay. So very appropriate for Park City because they were the spirits of the pine tree trees okay. and the, the mountain valleys, um, so Echo was an Oread. So just for a little just bit of context. Just for reference there. Yes. And uh, so this is going to be, uh, if you're a fan of gin, gin tasting drinks, kind of yeah. that juniper kind of piney flavor as you'd said. Yeah, so this you get some of those notes but from completely different botanicals. This is our first long lost. It's based on a lost spirit from a distillery that hasn't existed for uh, almost 100 years. That's such a cool um, concept. I love that you're doing yeah. that. So we go back in distillation history and we create spirits that we think are real accomplishments. Um, we reinterpret them, we may restructure them in some ways for a modern audience, but the core is still very much inspired by that original that's, spirit. That's awesome. Uh, this one is based on sage, 
cassia cinnamon, sweet orange peel, uh, you have a note of star anise, uh, nutmeg, allspice. Wow. So it's an interesting range of flavors. Roman chamomile is the floral that sits huh. on top of all of that. So it's an interesting way of approaching a botanical spirit from a different direction than, than gin, than, juniper. Than, than common, which yeah, is no very No juniper great. in this at all. Wow, so very d different flavor. <laughs> if you're a fan of gin, it's something that you maybe want to try to mix things up a little yeah. bit, and I don't mean to have a pun there. Yeah. Pun not intended exactly. there, but... Uh, it mixes very yeah, well, too. Yeah, it's great. Alan, thanks so much for joining us here. You have me really excited to learn more about all of these fantastic liqueurs. Again, where can people go to uh, find out more information as well as purchase some product for you as from you as well? So you can go to our website www.waterpocket.co there's no m on the okay, end okay.co dot dot co, right. uh, and most of the information is there there's a link to set up a tour or a tasting there um, there's a phone number you can call us and that comes to me most of Excellent. the time um, and these products are in a lot of the stores uh, they're represented well in the park city stores uh, but they're a wine store is a safe place to look for most of these as well. Fantastic. Alan, so, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. it. And your wife, Anna, as well. She couldn't be here. But thanks yeah. to you, both of you, obviously, for bringing some really high-quality good spirits to Utah. So much appreciated there. As uh, Alan mentioned, head to Water Pocket. Uh, is it waterpocket.co? or Dot water co. Pocket? Okay, waterpocket.co for more information. Maybe even set up a tour of the distillery. Uh, you will definitely not want to miss out there. And thanks again, Alan, for all of this. And highly encourage you to try it because you're going to experience something like you never have before. We're going to continue right here on the Mountain Morning Show. We'll be right back. Thank you.